The next topic which I am going to discuss with you is the automycosis or the fungal infection of the ear. Automycosis is usually seen in the hot and humid climate of the tropical and subtropical countries of the world. Automycosis is basically the fungal infection of the ear because of the Aspargillus niger, Aspargillus fumigatus, Candida or various fungal species. Now, the patients in this case usually present with intense itching in the ear. There may be excruciating pain in the ear, sometimes discharge and a musty odor from the ear. When examine the external auditory canal, this resembles like a wet uh, tissue or wet piece of filter paper and we can see filamentous blackheads of the fungus in that thing also. The treatment of this thing is usually the cleaning of the ear and the specific antifungal agents. We have to clean every fungal debris, epithelial debris which is conductive for the fungus to grow inside the ear. Then I tell you about the acute otitis media. Acute otitis media is the biogenic inflammation of the middle ear. This condition is usually seen in the infants and young children. The eustachian tube in infants is much more horizontal, wider and shorter than in the young children. That's why these infections of the middle ear are seen more commonly in these children. Usually, the infection travels along the lumen of the eustachian tube and reaches up to the middle ear. Breast and body feeding the infant in a horizontal position may force the fluids through the tube into the middle ear and hence the need of keeping the child propped up and the head elevated. Then there may be some other factors like recurrent upper viral respiratory tract infections, common cold, infections of the adenoids, tonsils, chronic sinusitis, rhinitis, nasal allergy and cleft palate. All these conditions may force the middle ear to have infections. Usually this disease runs through different stages. That is the stage of tubal occlusion, stage of pre-separation, separation, stage of resolution and then the stage of complication. First of all the stage of tubal occlusion starts because the nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube it gets blocked resulting in negative pressure in the middle ear and the tympanic membrane or the ear gram it gets redirected. If that stage is prolonged then the stage of pre-separation comes where the middle ear starts producing pus. Secondly if this condition also gets prolonged then there is free pus formation in the middle ear and the tympanic membrane may come to the point of rupture. The children may present with earaches, crying, pulling the ear and sometimes the deafness also. Now if the antibiotics have been started early, sometimes the stage may pass into the stage of resolution that is the tympanic membrane swelling it may subside or in some cases there may be a perforation of the tympanic membrane in that case you may see a fluid coming out through the child's ear or sometimes a blood stain discharge. Then the stage of complication for example if the virulence of the organism is high or the resistance of the patients the resistance of the patient is poor then it may go into the stage of complication that is there may be acute mastoiditis that is swelling behind the ear or facial paralysis even it, the infection may go into the brain like meningitis, brain abscess, extradural abscess and even lateral sinus thrombophlebitis. The treatment of this condition usually uh, consists of giving the antibiotics, oral uh, and nasal decongestants, nasal decongestant drops and cleaning the ear if the discharge is there. And this condition should be closely monitored until the tympanic membrane returns to its normal shape and the conductive, deafness, uh, the conductive deafness has subsided. Telling you about earwax, automycosis and acute otitis media, I am Dr. Gorovashan.